Hi there. Welcome to R&D Explains, episode one, how to make a personalized story. I'm Emma Young. I work at BBC R&D. We're part of the, the BBC and we focus on research and development, looking at future technologies that might be with you in the next few years. So we're engineers here. We like to experiment with stuff. So we thought it'd be nice to get together some of my colleagues at BBC R&D and have a chat about some of the things we're working on and get your feedback on them. Okay, so with me today is Matthew Brooks. Matthew is a lead R&D engineer with our Future Experiences Technologies team. Matt, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you, Emma. How are you? Yeah, I am getting used to life in lockdown. Um, yeah. How are you? Are you coping with it okay? Well, I, I must admit, I'm, I'm missing the view we would have had if we'd have filmed this as planned uh, up on the sixth floor in Dock House, uh, looking over the Manchester skyline. But, uh, you know, I'm doing okay. Yeah, and we get to see in each other's houses. So it's yes. Good. Okay, so do you want to tell us a bit about what you do at R&D then, Matt? Well, uh, I'm a lead R&D engineer. Uh, but I spend a lot of my time actually running a work stream, kind of a research area. Uh, and uh, the research area I'm kind of working in is, is object-based media, which is one of the technologies uh, that we're going to talk about today that enables this personalised storytelling. Okay, so you've spent the last few, few years doing a lot of work on personalised stories, Matt. So why is personalisation important? Why, why are we looking at it at BBC R&D? Well, I suppose it, uh, it's us challenging the assumption that one size fits all is, uh, uh, is kind of appropriate when it comes to media. You know, we all need something different from uh, what we read, uh, from what we read on websites, from what we see in the media. Uh, and this is about uh, really looking at how I can make a bit of media work better uh, for any particular individual in the audience rather than everybody getting exactly the same content. We have made a, a number of audience experiences recently that we've user tested because um, it's very important for us that we're personalizing for a reason. You know, uh, this is not uh, an area that we've got into for the novelty of it. Uh, we really want to get to the heart of how changing a piece of media for kind of every individual in the audience in some way can, can offer them more value so they can get more out of it, whether that's uh, more educationally uh, or you know kind of more entertainment wise it doesn't matter really if if personalization offers offers us a way of you know upping what each individual audience member gets then uh, it's what we want to look into so uh, we user tested recently a personalized documentary called Instagramification uh, which was personalized by kind of the to taste that you might have so do you like tech or not do you like sport do you like celebrities uh, and it was also personalised in terms of tone, so uh, depending on the way you answered our questions at the start of the documentary, you'd even get a, a different presenter. Uh, and this test did really quite well with the audience. They all felt like the personalisation was meaningful to them. Because I guess the, the level of personalisation that people are maybe used to, or maybe, you know, a, a curated playlist on Spotify is a, is a type of personalisation, but this the object-based media experiences you're talking about that you've tested out with users uh, is, is much deeper. It's much deeper than that. Can you tell us a bit about the object-based nature and the, the type of personalization you can achieve with that? I think I sort of separate them in terms of uh, what you're talking about with Spotify or maybe an iPlayer um, recommending you something to watch. Uh, the key for me there is recommendation and recommendation and personalization, uh, they get a little bit mixed up and I can see why. Um, so when we talk recommendation, that's very much about saying, well, you've consumed, you've watched some piece of media, you've read something, uh, we think that you might like something else based on what you've just read uh, or what you've just watched, of course. Um, so that's very much recommendation. You know, you've listened to a bunch of tracks, Spotify recommends you some new tracks. Um, and you could say that's about personalizing a sort of service at the level of individual bits of content, you know, whole programs. But when we talk about personalization and when we're talking about personalization today, we're talking about getting into those individual programs and changing their content. So this is about having uh, maybe a personalized news bulletin 
or a personalized radio show or a personalized drama, anything really. But we're not talking about saying, well, you've watched this, so you might like that. We're actually saying, well, in this individual program, we think you might want it this way or that way. So it's very, it's very different from recommendation, I would say. And your the, the kind of aim at the moment is really supporting creatives and being able to make personalized experiences. So how are you going about, you know, getting tools into the hands of those creatives, into production teams? Absolutely, yeah. That's something that uh, me and the team have been working on for a number of years now. Uh, we started off in R&D a few years ago uh, working on what we call object-based media. Uh, and this is just the idea that you can split content up into chunks and send all of those bits separately to, to the audience devices. And then the audience devices can kind of recombine them in some way. Um, and once you've sort of worked at that kind of level, uh, it, it's a technology that enables this sort of personalization because you're not sending a whole movie file to someone anymore. You're maybe sending all of the scenes separately and the subtitles separately and maybe even the music. So all those items can kind of be swapped around. Uh, so we did a number of years of, of kind of prototyping these approaches at R&D. Um, but after a while, we realized that, you know, we, as you said at the top, we are, we're, we're a bunch of engineers. You know, we have some content makers in R&D, uh, but to, to really kind of scale the discovery of where we can personalize within content, we needed to get content creators involved. And you can't get content creators involved without tools. So we've been working on uh, a kind of suite of, of tools called StoryKit, uh, which have just reached their kind of 1.0 release uh, milestone uh, and these uh, these tools uh, our main authoring tool Storyformer allows you uh, as someone who's got an idea for how you might personalize uh, a, a, a bit of content or make a bit of content interactive uh, you can actually kind of execute these ideas with the tool you don't need programming skills uh, it's kind of drag and drop interface um, and uh, we've had several production teams both within and outside the BBC uh, using these tools to build a number of audience experiences. So it's by kind of getting these tools into people's hands, as you say, uh, we're at a phase now where we want to get the tools into as many people's hands as possible because it is, it's the creative people that are going to help discover where the value of this personalization is. <laughs> So we'll get back to the tools, the story former that's now available for creators to use. We'll get back to that in a minute. But first, can you tell us some about some of the experiences that have already been built, both um, some experimentations within R&D and also with some third party creatives, other parts of the BBC? There's a number of experiences to try on Taster. And I believe due to the current lockdown situation, a whole load of them went back on. They kind of expired, they'd, they'd had their run of user testing, and now they're back on there for people to try out. So I guess maybe the first thing before creatives go to use the tool, they might want to check out what, what is already on there, the kind of things we've been experimenting. Yeah, so there's uh, there's a few experiments that I think are still up on, on, on BBC Taster. Uh, some of those were built with the Storyformer tool that I've been talking about. And uh, there are other experiments into personalization that use this object-based media approach uh, that aren't built with Storyformer. Um, we started off actually in... Uh, uh, in this area by actually personalizing a, a live football broadcast. That was one of the first things we did. Uh, very simple personalization. Which end of the uh, pitch do you want to sit in? Which stand are you? Who do you support, basically? Uh, and that was a really simple experiment that made you feel like you were sitting you know, with the rest of your supporters because all of the crowd noise and all of the applause uh, went along with how well your team was doing. So very simple, basic experiment. That one's not out there anymore, but it gives you an idea of uh, how interesting and how, how meaningful this personalization could be. Um, using Storyformer, one of the first things we built was an origami frog make-along. Uh, and that's been put back on uh, Taster uh, because uh, you know there are people at home and uh, you might want something crafty to do. Uh, so that was our kind of first output of the tool that we've uh, that we've been building uh, that's a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, so unlike say a YouTube video uh, it doesn't run away from you it waits at the end of each step for you to kind of complete your folds uh, and using our kind of object-based technology you can you can view the uh, the guy Sam who's teaching you uh, you can view what he's doing from different angles which can help you get your folds right 
Uh, you can even flip through the whole thing as a series of diagrams if you wanted to. Um, so that was that was very exciting for us. That was our first release, uh, probably over a couple of years ago now. Um, I think the next uh, the next really big thing we got, we persuaded the Click team. Uh, so BBC have got a tech segment called Click. It goes out uh, regularly uh, on News uh, Twenty Four. Uh, or news as it's called now, I should say. Um, and for their 1,000th show, uh, they decided to use Storyformer to build a fully interactive version of the show. So they normally put out a 30 minute uh, show every week. Um, but for this, I think there's over two hours of content. It's all interactive. You can dive around the new stories. You can get more detail. You can choose in what order you kind of hear uh, the tech news. Uh, so that was a really big form for us. That was the first time we had quite a, uh, a major uh, BBC production uh, taking a punt, basically, on these tools. And is that still on there? Because I, mean, I, I viewed it, I interacted with it, I thought it was fantastic. With a branch of narrative type thing, I think, did, did someone not get in touch, a mathematician, wanting to work out exactly how many routes through the story there was? Oh, there were there were a crazy amount of routes through there, as ever. <laughs> you have to watch it lots of times then, just to experience everything but yeah I, I really liked it and that's something that you, you really looked at in detail and believe you produced a report for the instagramification experience where you're looking at how people interact with the branch and narrative story and um, can you tell us about instagramification yeah so um instagramification so unlike click which was uh, an idea that came from the click team themselves uh, Instagramification was uh, us in R and D really setting out to to make some content that we could use to kind of test our ideas. You know, so it's very deliberate the way we set up the functionality there. Uh, so we wanted to make a piece of uh, interactive content. Uh, you know, kind of targeting the under thirty fives uh, to see how well this personalization might work for them. To see if it makes our content more engaging. Um, so uh, we decided to uh, we decided to obviously pick a topic that was pretty relevant for that age group, Instagram. Uh, looking at the good, the bad, and the evil in, of Instagram, um, and it's kind of like a magazine sort of uh, show. So there's a number of articles about uh, different uh, Instagram Instagrammers. Are they called Instagrammers? I don't even know. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the gram on the gram, the grammars. Uh, we've got a number of those talking about their experiences of of, um, uh, of Instagram, um, but we really wanted to test out the idea of of that personalization. So, obviously, social networks are great in terms of personalization because you can follow tech, you can follow celebs, you can follow sports. You know, uh, everyone's used to those feeds being personalized. They personalize them themselves by who they follow. So, I suppose we were kind of taking that idea on into. Uh, you know, into a kind of a, into a video-based interactive media piece, allowing you to tailor that. So the documentary would focus on dis different aspects uh, of interest through that lens of Instagram, I suppose. And different from the click, where you are continually making choices as the show plays out. Um, you set up your your you tailor your experience at the beginning, and then it plays out. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's a that's a really important point to make. Yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, we talk about uh, well, I talk about upfront personalization and kind of lean forward interaction, and I'll try and put a bit of meat on those. So uh, in in Click and our Click experience, uh, you start the show. It looks like a normal bit of video, right? Uh, and then some options appear at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and you choose what you want to happen. And the entire show proceeds in that manner. So uh, every time there's a kind of point of interaction or a point of personalization, um, we say to you, how do you want this personalized now? Do you want to go this way? Do you want to go that way? So that's kind of, we, we call those uh, choices in kind of story former terminology. You lean forwards as a viewer and you make a choice where you want things to go. Now, Instagram worked, Instagramification worked in a different way uh, we have something that we call variable panels, a bit of a dry bit of terminology, but this is basically like a form that you can put in front of the viewer at any point in the program uh, or in the experience as we call them. Um, 
and they can personalize in that panel. So Instagramification starts and it says, well, do you like sport or not? You know, are you interested in celebrities? Uh, yeah, what's your view on tech? Do you want to be informed or entertained? Right, there's a number of questions. And we ask those all before Instagramification starts. Uh, so we've got that personalization from you right at the start. And then Instagramification plays out, not like click at all, because uh, almost all the way through, you lean back. You don't have to interact again for that personalization to happen because we picked it up from you uh, from the start. Uh, and this is really interesting. I think the, uh, the choices mechanism of leaning forward is quite fun and engaging. But the idea that we might be able to personalize something up front without you needing to interact so much, uh, that really lends itself to an uh, to, to sort of personalization that doesn't really take to to too much effort from you as an audience member. And one of the things that we're interested in in the future maybe, uh, we're looking at how we can connect uh, kind of new services to your personal data. But at the same time, we're looking at how we can keep that personal data safe, take it back essentially so you own it. Now, if you will let future BBC per, uh, services into some of your personal data for some of your likes and dislikes, uh, maybe it's just giving access to your Facebook or Instagram feed uh, to work out whether you like celebrities or technology without having to ask you. We can imagine some experiences then that are personalized actually without you having to do anything. So lots of great experiences to try out um, on Taster. So hopefully you can check out some of those. But Matt, I wonder, can you tell us if you've been doing any research on the accessibility use cases? Yeah, well, there's been a number of bits of work uh, around R&D. Uh, I should say at this point, OBM is, uh, and this personalization isn't just something that, uh, that my team do. It kind of crops up uh, all around R&D. Uh, one of the most interesting accessibility pieces of work we've done uh, is, is uh, is a piece called uh, Casualty Loud and Clear. So this was uh, kind of a, an accessibility trial uh, for uh, Casualty um, that was looking at how well people can hear the dialogue and how well people can kind of understand what goes on. So uh, you can imagine like in a lot of video games, you can balance your music against your dialogue and your sound effects and stuff. Um, but this work kind of goes way beyond that. It looks at uh, what the kind of relative narrative importance of all the bits of audio in something are. Um, in one of our earlier experiments, actually, uh, we made a variable length radio program, um, and that had a music control and a dialogue control. And we made the assumption that all of the, all of the uh, narrative was in the dialogue without really thinking. Sometimes music has a storytelling function or a sound effect might have a storytelling function. So this idea of, say, if you want to hear uh, if you want to understand better what goes on of just punching the dialogue up uh, in audio level terms, it doesn't really always hold. So uh, we work with the University of Salford uh, and Lauren Ward uh, to put together a kind of demo of uh, a much more kind of nuanced and intelligent sort of audio balance control for the audience. Uh, so Lauren talked to a bunch of uh, producers about what the function of kind of a sound effect in casualty is, uh, music and the dialogue, uh, and was able to kind of assign a narrative importance to every bit of audio that they used in the production. Uh, and then as an audience member, you can kind of decide, well, do I want to kind of really get into the story here? If I've got kind of a hearing impairment, do I want to kind of lose anything that's not the storytelling elements of casualty? Uh, or maybe if you're at home listening on a fantastic surround system, you can go all the other, you can basically go the other way and turn up all the immersion. So you're kind of immersed in all of the sound effects of, of casualty, but you're still getting the dialogue in the middle. So we think this is a, I think this is a, an absolutely fascinating and really useful thing to be doing. Uh, and it can only be done really through this object based media approach of delivering all of those bits of audio separately. And of course, it's not just things on screen that can be adapted to suit your context or your environment, your preferences. It can also be things around us, like in the smart home environment. Oh, yeah. Um, some of Ian Forrester's work on Living Room of the Future with um, colleagues at Lancaster University. We're looking at that, to how things can be adapted, how your smart lights can can you know be in tune with what you're seeing on screen? Yes, yes. So we've had some involvement with kind of various Living Room of the Future setups that are looking about, I suppose, 
spreading that experience of media across any device that might be able to represent some aspect of it, whether it's uh, light bulbs or fans or, you know, all, all sorts of really interesting kind of immersive uh, stuff there. Uh, and we also have work uh, in orchestrating content across multiple screens. So we have a multiple device orchestration pro project uh, and we've worked in the past with uh, BT and other partners on Two Immerse. And they're all about, well, with the multiple device orchestration, imagine a radio play, but uh, you've kind of got multiple speakers around your house. So you can have the a little portable speaker in front of you for the dialogue but the atmosphere is coming out of maybe a couple of mobile phones in the background. You know, really, really interesting stuff that looks at using the devices we've got around the house in new ways to kind of make these experiences more immersive. So moving on, how, how can creators get their hands on these tools that you've built? Well, the first port of call uh, to get hold of some of our tools is, is MakerBox. So MakerBox is a, uh, a website uh, and a team uh, that uh, are there to kind of get these creative tools into, into, uh, into your hands, I suppose, uh, and support you in using those tools. Um, so there's, there's many tools on there. Storyformer is just one of them. Uh, but that's our vehicle really for, for kind of engaging with this community of practice. It allows us as the Storyformer team to make it as good as possible. Uh, and then Laura and her team in MakerBox uh, can get out there. They can promote it. Uh, they can support users. Uh, they make sure that we've all got the right stuff to support the users. So it's, it's really fantastic to have, the, have this kind of uh, function that exists to engage with these communities, find these communities uh, and kind of stimulate them with these tools. So using, if a creative wants to use Storyformer via BBC MakerBox, they just go to the website, they can then download the tool, do they download the tool to their own machine? Uh, well, no, first things first, you, you're going to send MakerBox an email saying uh, who you are, why you want it, what you might do with it. Uh, this is not just for BBC people, so we are trying to uh, spread it wider than that. Uh, and it's a cloud-based tool, so uh, really, you don't have to download anything. It's all done in the browser. Um, you ingest your media through the browser, you arrange it in our Storyformer tool and add interactivity, uh, and then we have a player that can play those experiences out. Oh, that's great. And how do you think these experiences will be hosted in the future? Is it something we can see on BBC iPlayer in the future, do you think? Uh, well, I would love to see that, obviously. So uh, we we would uh, we have our own player at the moment, but I think to to kind of widen, uh, I suppose the we want to make object based media and these personalised experiences a bit more normal, really, a bit more regular, a bit more business as usual. So we're working on a number of leads that would help us get our player into all the places that you might find a video player around the BBC website. And does production have to change much if you want to make your your new experience object based? I mean, how, how much does it diverge from normal, you know, planning out a shoot and filming it? Well, it really is. Uh, that's a function of the ideas that you have. So uh, a personalized object based media experience could be as simple as uh, a pre or post watershed moment. In fact, if we go back to casualty, imagine you could personalize casualty if you're a bit squeamish. Right, so the only scenes you might change in Casualty are maybe cutting away from a knife going in or something like that. Really, really minor edits. And you can imagine that building uh, an experience like that, that's got that little level of personalization, uh, will be quite simple. Um, whereas if you want to build another Click 1000, a kind of all singing, all dancing, branching experience, uh, that's going to involve more planning. What we are finding in general is that uh, the more complex the interactions uh, that you're imagining are, or the more complex the personalization is, all of the work's in the planning stage. By the time you bring your ideas into Storyformer, you've kind of gone out and you've captured the footage, but before that, you've structured your ideas. You've worked out, essentially, well, they could go from here to here, so we need to make sure we film this version of that and that version of that. So, yeah, my answer really is it depends what you want to do. It's, it's as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Okay, so when people are using the tool in Storyformer, they can communicate with us on MakerBox. We're both registered on there. You can talk to us directly on that if you're having any issues, if you've got feedback on the tool. But I really encourage you to, you know, 
get on there, get on MakerBox, play with the tools. We've got lots of tools, but particularly with what we've been talking about in this episode, have a look at Storyformer and see what you can come up with and reach out to us and let us know what you think. Matt, is there anything else you'd like to say about that? Um, no, I mean, I'll, I'll just echo what you're saying. Please get in touch with us on MakerBox. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of emailing to do to get access to the tool, but we are trying to get as many people on as, as possible because when it comes down to it, we are now going to learn from you creating things with this tool. Excellent. And also, there's an article published recently about the, our learnings, the, the research we've done and our learnings on Instagramification, this branching narrative, the more like kind of lean back, lean back, lean forward, where you make your, your, your decisions at the beginning, then it plays out. So if anyone wants to learn more about that, you know, we're really, really open about what we do. So you should definitely check us out on the R&D website. Um, we've got a blog in there. We blog uh, very regularly on what we're doing. And also you can keep in touch with our, follow us on Twitter. A lot of tweets going out um, on current, current things that are going on. Uh, and also just let us know what you think of this, this new format, R&D Explains, because we'll be back with you. And we plan to do it maybe quarterly and um, talk about the various projects that we've got on. So please do let us know what you think. And yeah, hopefully you tune in again really soon.